hi you guys so i'm back today with a joint video um sorry I, the this was supposed to come before the strawberry moon happened it already did i don't know if y'all seen it but i did it was beautiful um and i also want to talk about the um unidentified object um that was in space um scientists you know they were debating on whether it was comet or asteroid the pronunciation that i'm going to use for it is ui mama and if that gets to be too much of a tongue twist, I'm just going to call it O. Oh. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, oh, let's do it. All right, let's get right into it. <laughs> um, and I'm switching gears for a second. For those of y'all who don't know, um, I was always interested in astronomy as a kid. Like, I always used to get, like, you know, from the library, I would get books on the moon, you know, planets, Ooh, me. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, my penis. <laughs> All right, let me stop. <laughs> I'm tired as hell. So, um, at any rate, let me get right into it. So, We Mama is um, a mysterious space rock first spotted in 2017. Scientists and astronomers weren't sure if it was an icy rock and a rocky, uh, a rocky asteroid or something entirely new. However, it accelerates like a comet. So, researchers tracked the space rock's trajectory on its way out of the solar system using telescopes on the ground and the powerful Hubble Space Telescope. Shout out to the Hubble. <laughs> they discovered that we mama's speed couldn't just be the result of gravity. It was accelerating. And that's where, you know, they were, you know, it, that's where they mentioned that it accelerates like a comet. Now, there is a debate over the identity because it's not quite like anything that was, has been seen before. Usually, comets have a cloud of dust and gas surrounding them, but we mama did not have one, which mean, or which could mean that it was most likely made of rock and metal, like an asteroid. All righty. In December, researchers led by Alan F. Dot, an astronomer at Queen's University, Belfast, suggested that Ui Mama was indeed comet-like. It was just coated in a thick layer of carbon-rich grime that insulated the space rock's icy heart. Okay, that's a bit much, but okay. <laughs> the rock's exit from our neighborhood has settled most astronomers' minds. It's a comet, just an unusual one. I love this paper because it shows I'm right. Of course, I'm going to love this paper because it shows I'm right. Fitz, oh, Fitzsimmons, yeah. Who wasn't involved in today's study? The important thing about this paper, let's be simple, sensible for a moment, is that it's a really careful analysis of how this object has moved through the solar system as we've been observing it. As the space rock careened away from the sun and us, a research team led by Marco Michelli an astronomer at the European Space Agency Center that studies near-Earth objects tracked it. They discovered that Uimama was accelerating and the interactions with gravity from the moon, the sun, and nearby planets weren't enough to explain it. There was something else that was pushing Uimama out from the sun, so it was moving faster than it should be just due to gravity alone. That's exactly what you see with a comet. As the sun warms up a comet, its ice thaws to gas, like dry ice does here on Earth. So it's this gas coming off the comet that gives this push. As says Karen Meach, an astronomer at the University of Hawaii and an author of today on today's study. Shout out to the women in astronomy, okay? All right, Miss Karen. <laughs> that acts like little rocket thrusters. That could explain Ui Mama's accelerations, although to be certain, the team explored other possibilities too. Maybe the force of the sun's radiation was giving the space rock an extra nudge, or maybe the comet was magnetized and was getting a push from the, solar's, from the solar wind's magnetic field. But the best explanation was that Ui Mama was a comet for sure, a weird one, but a comet. So why didn't researchers see that characteristic cloud of dust and gas around Uimama. The dust could have been stripped for the comet as it flew through space, or maybe astronomers just missed it. And gas is actually hard to detect, Meech says. You need a bright comet or a really big telescope. And this was a very faint comet, so people tried, but the data was very noisy. 
It's also possible that astronomers were looking for the wrong gases. One gas that researchers would expect to see rising off of Uimama was cyanide, Meech says. Yeah, I knew about that, by the way. It emits light from the in ver- it emits light very strongly in blue colors and no one saw it. If the chemistry was the same, we would have seen some, Meech says. That means the space rock's chemical makeup could be different from comets that originate closer to home. Which is why this interstellar visit is so exciting, Meech says. It gives us a glimpse of glimpse of the process of building planets somewhere else or elsewhere. Of course, the real proof would come from sending a spacecraft to get an up close look at Uimama's surface, but that's unlikely to happen. The space rock is too far away and traveling too quickly. So Meech's focus is to shift is shifting to the next one. If in the future you can have a spacecraft ready to wait, then waiting to go, that would be a much easier mission. That is very true. Um, Fitzsimmons is looking forward to the discoveries that might fly into our solar system within the next, or with the next interstellar visitor. How cool is it that we've been talking in recent years about trying to design a spaceship that might get to a nearby star, he says. Stars are actually sending us material from their own planetary systems. And to be able to study that in any kind of detail is truly a magnificent endeavor. So, yeah, y'all, that uh, it was it was very interesting for me to read that. You know what I'm saying? I've definitely um, that I don't know if that fascinates y'all. You know what I'm saying? I definitely want to switch gears, though, because that fascinates me. Definitely. All right. So now I want to move on to part two, which is the strawberry moon. All righty. So the strawberry moon, it occurred June 28th at 2018. Like I said, sorry for, you know, I was supposed to post this before that, my bad. <laughs> but um, the name comes from Algangian. Oh, wait, hold up, hold up. I want to see how you say this. All right. We're going we gonna, to, give me just a second. We're going to look this up. Algonquin, okay, tribes of Native Americans. The full moon was their sign of harvest to wild, or there was their sign to harvest wild strawberries, says the old farmer's almanac. Alrighty, this has other names in other parts of the world. In Europe, you may hear it called the honeymoon, mead moon, med moon, or the full rose moon. In the southern hemisphere, it can go by oak moon, cold moon, or long night moon, according to earthsky.org. In the United States, the peak of the full moon happens depending on, depending, sorry, I just said depending, goddamn, <laughs> depending on your time zone, in eastern time zone, that will happen at 12.53 a.m. Thursday, June 5th, or June 28th, sorry. Back on the west coast, peak time will be 9.53 peak, okay, we, we don't need to read this shit because... It's too late now. If y'all ain't seen the shit, you just missed it. Uh-huh. Sorry. <laughs> I really wanted to get this out, uh, pot, this this one out before then. Um, this was in- this is interesting though. All the all of South America, the bulk of North America, Western Africa, and Portugal will or would be under the oak cloak of darkness during the peak. The rest of Europe, Eastern Africa, Asian, Asia. And Australia will be bathed in daylight at peak full moon. If it's night at your peak time, you might find the moon so bright in the dark sky that it will be hard to look at it for more than a few t- few seconds. But for the best impressions, take a look not to peak at not at peak time, but while the moon is still low in your horizons, says CNN meteorologist Judson Jones. Wow, that's a strange name. Okay. <clears throat> Alrighty, now, this is interesting, it brought, uh, brings up a part about Saturn. Now, about that heavenly bonus, you may notice a bright object near the moon. That will be not a star, but Saturn. The ringed planet will be in what's called opposition, meaning it will be opposite the sun in Earth's sky. You won't be able to see those fabled rings unless you have a telescope, but just pay attention with the naked eye and, and with the naked eye, you'll see the planet close to the strawberry moon. 
Now, I actually was able to see a little bit of what they're talking about. At the time, I just assumed it was a star, just a big-ass star. But, um, yeah, so that that was, uh, it was pretty cool. I seen it, you know what I'm saying? I, I wish I had got the story out before, you know what I'm saying? But I definitely, I definitely, um, it was an interesting, it was an interesting sight for me to see. You know what I'm saying? So was in the Ash story, reading about it and researching it. It was very interesting. You know what I'm saying? Um, astronomy um, is something I definitely wish people was more, you know, more people was interested in. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it always intrigued me. So I'm glad to bring something different to the show. And um, y'all let me know anything else. If y'all want me to talk about anything else, you know what I'm saying? Different from what I usually talk about, you know. Ooh, excuse me. I feel as, you know, black commentators, you know, whether you're a podcaster or a YouTuber, I feel like we can branch out for more than just celebrity gossip, you know what I'm saying? Because if, if all we're doing is that, then how are we any better than the celebrities we gossiping about or these reality TV people, you know what I'm saying? Um, you got to put the right energy and vibe into your stuff, and you definitely need, having a mixture is a good, you know what I'm saying? It's not a bad thing. So if there's anything else y'all would like me to cover, um, let me know down below, and if I can, you know, find it interesting enough, you know, I might, I might give you a little shout out <laughs> on the next, you know, little segment, you know, whatever I gotta do, and um, yeah, um, but y'all hit me up down below, and um, yeah, I will catch y'all on the next episode. Bye.